Now, Layla, I want to come to you now. You know, can I, Dr. Layla? Are we going to call you Dr. Layla's good. Layla's Layla. good. So yeah. I want to reference that because, you know, netball captain and a doctor. And I saw somewhere that you became a doctor based, not based upon Grey's Anatomy in, in ER, but kind of. <laughs> I, like I saw you, that you're somewhere. You're all too young for Grey's Anatomy. Are you? Anyone Let's seen see. Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. Yeah, I hate you people. Yeah, it's not like Grey's Anatomy. But all jokes um, aside, but though, how did you balance, you know, those two things? Because that is incredible. Doctor, captain, netball team, everything. Yeah, I think the thing about netball, and I don't know how many of you play netball, um, but it's something that we all play at school, uh, but it's not a career that we can live off forever. So we're not footballers, we don't make millions of pounds. Um, and so for so many netballers, there is something else that we have to do on the side anyway. And for me, I just, I always wanted to be a doctor. And I remember my dad saying to me when I was at school, you can do this netball thing, but you're also going to do your academic thing. Um, and I had loads of teachers and netball coaches that were like, you know, we don't think you can do both of these things. And I remember just thinking, you know, why? Like you see so many people that do do both things or in every sphere of life, there's people that can balance things. So why, why can't I? Um, and so along the way that it's been challenging at times, but it's been so worth it. And I just want to say there's, for any of you out there, I think there's lots of pressure on you guys, especially at this age to know what you want to be or, mm what academic pathway you want to go into but I don't think it's that important to know I think if there's things that you're passionate about things that you're prepared to work hard at then it all kind of works out in the end and that's how I felt I just was really passionate about both things and wanted to make them work absolutely and I think something that you have to have as well is discipline when you're balancing the two and obviously with your training schedule talk to us a little bit about that training schedule and balancing you know becoming a doctor at the same time yeah I do think you have to be organized and I am not the most organized <laughs> person at all um, but it's, it's making things work. And like Livy said, you know, we train quite hard in netball. I think people often think it's a, a, a girly sport that we wear flowing dresses and we just turn up to play. Um, but we're in the gym a lot, you know, we train, we do weights, we do endurance, we do everything um, that elite athletes across all the sports do. Um, so for me, it's, it's been working that out over the years. So what time I train in between my shifts or what training do I do on that day? Sometimes if I've had 13 hour days, I'm just like, today is not the day to train. I'll do double the session tomorrow. Um, and just knowing myself, knowing my body and trying to make it all work. And I've had a lot of people to help me along the way. I've had a lot of really good netball coaches. I've had some great uh, colleagues that I work with who have helped me, really great teachers when I was at school as well, who helped me to be able to balance my schoolwork and netball. Um, so asking for help and trying to be organised have definitely been important. I don't know if you remember this, my mum and dad always used to say to me, the best time of your life is when you're at school. When I was in it, I used to think, no, now I look back on that and I think life is so much easier mm -hmm. and more simple yeah. during those moments, don't you think? Yeah, I do. I think it's more um, that you don't have all the other responsibilities <laughs> like bills that adulthood <laughs> brings you. Um, and so, yeah, you do... I guess you've got a bit more license to, to be yourself and kind of follow some of the passions that you have. And playing a team sport, how important was that for you? You know, being on a team, working together? Yeah, I love team sport. Um, and I, when I was probably about 13, so maybe a bit younger than some of you guys, um, it was between athletics and netball for me. And I remember on the same day I had an England athletics triple jump trial and I had England netball trials. Uh, and I remember sitting there with the two sheets of paper just being like, oh, they're the same time on the same day. Like, what am I going to do? Uh, but I, I loved netball and I just loved that I could play with my friends. Um, I loved that we'd win together, we'd lose together and you'd have that environment. And I've been in the England team for 13 years uh, and I've made some of the best friendships of my whole life from it. And they're the things I think that you really value when you're a bit older. You value the wins, the losses, but you value the good friends that you've made. And I, I love that about team sport, and I love that about netball. Amazing. 13 years playing for a round of applause, guys. Come on. Yeah. That's just incredible. That's incredible. That's incredible. You're not home. <laughs> Now, I said today we're going to kind of talk about the good, the bad and the ugly because obviously we sit here and we're kind of talking about all the positive things. But I want us to talk about a little bit, you and I later, about experiences we've had, you know, amongst racism, systematic racism, you know, subconscious, unbiased racism. It exists. And it's something I've had to do with my whole life, my whole career. And I'm sure a lot of people in this room have. Is this something you've had to deal with? You know, because I, I stood up for a situation with my national team for a teammate that was, you know, a coach made some comments and. It ended up being on the news, we went to the House of Commons, and in the end, you know, we, we proved that we were telling the truth because we were all along. But then I lost my England career based upon it. 
So it was quite an extreme situation, but I sleep at night knowing that I did the right thing, you know, and, and I have a clear conscience of doing that. I'm not perfect, but I try to be. Um, is, it, is racism something you've experienced playing or something you've seen? And how do you respond when that's happened to you? Yeah, it's definitely something I've experienced and I've experienced it both in the sporting world and in the medical world. Um, and both are really difficult to deal with. Um, I think from a sporting point of view, the kind of worst racism that I experienced was when I went and played in Australia. And in Australia, there's a professional netball league out there. So, you know, you get paid a lot more than you do here. Um, but Australia has quite a different, I guess, society and demographic to what we have here. And I had another black girl in my team. Um, and yeah, regularly people said incorrect things to us. We were mistaken for each other nationally on the news. Um, and people didn't see anything wrong with it. And I remember going into a supermarket out there um, with my whole team, um, and I was stopped at the door for them to search my bag. And we all had our normal training bags, I had my sweaty trainers in there, um, I hadn't stolen anything. And I remember putting something on social media, just saying, you know, hey supermarket, why was I the only one stopped out of a group of 10? Um, and it turned out that that supermarket was a sponsor of the club, and quite quickly, I was asked to remove the post um, because the club didn't want to lose their sponsorship deal. Um, and it was then I, I yeah, realised, as you say, that it, it's hard to be an advocate for racism, but it's really important. Um, and I, I refuse to take down the post because it's, it's my experience and I don't think we're there to just benefit the club and their sponsorship. We're people and we have our own feelings and people should advocate for us as well. Um, and then from a work point of view, I've regularly, well, not, I wouldn't say regularly, that's a bit unfair, but I've certainly had people who have not believed that I'm doctor, a doctor when I've gone to treat them, um, questioned where I'm from or where I'm really from when I say I'm from Birmingham. Um, and yeah, people who haven't wanted me to treat them um, and haven't said why, but you can always tell why. I want to touch upon that a little mm. bit because it's a feeling you get, isn't it? Because yeah. some people don't really understand. And I think it's a big topic of conversation. It's always been there. Racism has always been there and it always will be, unfortunately. But I think people like ourselves and everybody can kind of, if you do experience it, I would say speak up. But what I will say is a feeling you get in the pit of your stomach, isn't it? Because some people think, oh, you know, that can't be because of the colour of your skin. That can't be because of your sexuality. That can't be because you're a woman. And you're like, you just know it. But sometimes it's hard to vocalise those things because then you're perceived as like a troublemaker. Yeah. But it is a feeling that you get, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's hard sometimes when it's the, the, I guess we call it microaggressions now, but the things that aren't really blatant. So if someone says something really awful and racist to you, then we all know that that's racist. But when, like you say, it's the feeling in your stomach, it's really hard to to tell other people what that feeling feels like. Um, and sometimes you don't know in your mind and you're like, oh, am I just reading too much into this? Maybe I should just leave it. But then actually, no, this really isn't right. But I, I don't, you don't always know what to do about it. Yeah, well, I think you're amazing. So yeah. And speaking about periods at the Commonwealth Games a couple of years ago, we we're in a really tight bubble. And it so happened everybody went on their period at exactly the same time, and just went all out of sync. And we really struggled to get tampons into the village because oh, there were security what? checks and we were ordering them off Amazon and just trying to get hold of them. And it, it's a distraction that you don't really want when you're in the middle of a Commonwealth Games, which is kind of the pinnacle for netball. Um, and so they are things that as women, you have to really think about when you're packing your kit bag, you're thinking about your periods and you're thinking about what you need, where the men's games across all sports don't have that. So. Yeah, yeah. Kit periods, really important conversations. And I know a lot of sports, football and netball, are talking a lot about sports bras and how important that is and how periods can affect your training and can affect um, like your competition. And so, yeah, I do hope kind of in your generations, there'll be so much more information for you all.